In the 1920s, few Southern California communities could rival Beverly Hills for its magnificent estates. The movie industry was booming and the movie stars were America's royalty. And they lived like royalty too, in palaces above Sunset Boulevard. But the greatest palace of them all wasn't owned by a film star. It was built in 1927 by an oil millionaire named Edward Lawrence Doheny Jr. Named Greystone, his 45,000 square foot mansion was constructed in the southwest corner of his father's 429 acre ranch in Beverly Hills. It was constructed of three inch thick steel reinforced concrete walls and had a roof with slate tiles weighing 30 pounds each. Greystone was staffed by 33 live-in servants and stood on 25 acres of lavishly landscaped grounds. When construction was finished in 1928, it cost an unbelievable $3.2 million. Greystone indeed was the most magnificent estate ever built in Southern California. The Doheny sold Greystone in 1954, and in 1963, the city of Beverly Hills bought the estate for $1.1 million and turned the grounds into a park, leaving the mansion unused except for occasional rentals by film companies. And on July 11, 1993, the Beverly Hills Historical Society, with the wonderful creative talents of local merchants and designers, brought Craystone back to life again. 38 of the mansion's 55 main rooms were decorated for a magnificent tour and table setting show open to the public. This program shows how those designers and merchants used their magic to help the Beverly Hills Historical Society bring Greystone back to that bygone era. Steel girders that are anchored, this is solid rock. Beverly Hills on Little Sex Monica. Ah. Dinnerware by American artists. With European, you know, European and uh, uh, Asian uh, accents. Yes. for outside and dinnerware, glassware to fill the shelves. It's from Nature Company. Nature, what? Nature Company. Uh, oh. We got uh, garden scenes, little home scene, mm -hmm. outdoors. Philip Nimmo and Company, ah. uh, the South Boys Room, and um, what we've done here, as I'll have you follow me around, um, we tried to approach the room as a a young scholar's room, uh, a gentleman who's pursuing his studies, doing um, doing some traveling around the around the world, as and he's put together a few collections. He's obviously interested in uh, classical architectural fragments. Uh, but we have a nice day bed here that he's, uh, he uses for his bed. A table over here that he can display. He can display his uh, collections or possibly have dinner, oh, now? dinner on. Wonderful chair and ottoman to enjoy the view. And of course, the desk to work over here. Yeah. 
Well, much, much appreciated. A lot of, lot of hard work and a lot of love is in this room. This is the best taste. There, and we're going to keep it real low. preparing the dining room for David Orgel. We have a table setting here which we call the Million Dollar Table. Uh, we have filled it with uh, floor donica, which uh, most likely the Doheny's had in their possession during their time, and the best in crystal and flatware. Uh, the room is designed uh, by Beal & Associates, and uh, the other products are provided by David Orgel. Uh, we tried to give it the atmosphere and the feeling that uh, Doheny's probably uh, were accustomed to and lived uh, day by day uh, enjoying this beautiful mansion. And we hope people enjoy themselves today. Uh, mm -hmm. Most of the pieces are French and English, mostly French. I like French because it's sort of so much softer. It looks nice in a house like this, it's perfect for it. My name is Rosemary McCaffrey and I'm the interior designer of this room. And I've accumulated all this stuff from France and England. It's all 18th, 19th century furniture, all period. And uh, I think I've captured uh, what the room would, I imagine, would have looked like. And uh, um, I particularly like the lighting in the room, which has a lovely, airy, attractive uh, look. So here we have a nice example of a fruitful chest of drawers, French, 1750. It has uh, a place to eat place to write, place to sleep, a place to relax in the afternoon, and um, it's just very comfortable. And uh, we're delighted to be able to do it. It's really a pleasure. What do you think of what you've heard so far? I think it's very informative, most interesting. It's truly an experience, and I would have missed it had I not come. Oh, well, it's wonderful. It's oh, we're so lucky yeah, to be yes. here. To see this. This. You know, this is closed to the public. Work there and whatever she did. She had, you know, it's beautiful. I'm Patty Capali, and I'm from Cornucopia. Oh, and we've done the massage room. Yeah, they've done it. And uh, we like to think that. Uh, and Dohenia's secretary had massages before the murder. So we think we've got a twist going here. This is the master's mm -hmm. study, and this is Dohenia decided to use the far room as a sleeping room, and this as the sitting area, which I think is just lovely. These pictures are circa 1945, and as you can see, the fireplace is still the same. This is one of the only ones that's left. That she did not take. Right, the rest <laughs> of them she took up to the knoll when she built that. But I know the rest of the smoking salon. 
David Smith and Company. Wow. Custom caterers since 1959. Oh. And we have 14 restaurants throughout the world. What are you and doing here? Uh, we're doing, uh, obviously this is the Beverly Hills Historical Society. We've got uh, vegetables with hot chocolate. Over here we have assorted fresh vegetables with two uh, special dips. And over on this table, we have an assortment of four or five different uh, cheeses from throughout the world. Cut up a couple, about a dozen more pineapples. And then we've got some whole carrots. Let's just slice them up in the back, okay? And just wait to the last moment to cut the, uh, the honeydew so when it could come out. Can we double tape it and just stick it on you? Sure. I think it'd be better. This? Okay, I'll take these. Gonna get a great shot of that. Where you going? Get it on the shadows here. Alright, just repeat through it for a second. Okay. Grab this. Right. 259 XK150. Where's the car from? Classic and Vintage Car Company. All right. Where is it? 9797 Wilshire Boulevard. Right. Little yeah. Santa Monica. 1925 Rolls Royce Silver Ghost Springfield model, made in Springfield, Massachusetts. It was the car, one of the three cars in the Harold Lloyd estate when Harold died. And uh, all three are in my collection at the present time. The car has 49,000 original miles on it, and it's in totally original condition. Uh, just the edge of the fire station. Thank you. Thank you. On this level, you know. Oh, there, that building. Stanley Cars. Um, the car is from. Um, Originally, I think it was made in Detroit, 1931, and uh, for about eight years it was in a museum in Indiana, and it's been out here in California now for uh, for uh, five years. The car is a 1933 Pierce Arrow. It's a custom body LeBaron convertible sedan. There's a whole There's a whole lot. Slow down, guys. Okay, can we? No. Thank you. 
to there by two gates on the Dohini Road, which is now Loma Vista, is one of the gates leading into the Dohini Ranch. It's custom botanical reproductions that we produce um, in Santa Monica, California. I and my partner, Philip Newman, and he's the main designer. And we do hotels and restaurants, films and residences and theme parks. Truesdale uh, Estates, which is all of Truesdale, is uh, the Doheny Ranch. It's 429 acres. It's quite a big place. Now, an interesting point. You notice what kind of condition this one is in. It's in a strange condition. And look over here at the top of it. You see this little green kind of firearms is a Colt Patterson. These other firearms are Colt Navies. All of them are very elaborately uh, gold engraved. There's one Colt single action here that has three quarters of a pound of gold in the grips. The, grip in the, the grips are what are called uh, Tiffany grips because they were made in the Tiffany style. A very uh, ornate woman's traveling case of the 19th century. Colt uh, English officers pistols, circa 1850. Very fine English pistols of the 18th century, and a Colt uh, Dragoon revolver. And a pair of Colt single actions, also with very elaborately engraved uh, grips with rubies uh, set in there. And the guns on the far side here are basically one of each model of the Winchester firearms of the uh, 19th and 20th century. Tremendously impressed. I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job. It's really special. It's something that uh, it's tough to believe that it hasn't been this way all the time. It looks so great. This is Mrs. Domini's dressing room, her bath over in there, and her uh, closet which had her fur vault, and also a special little vault for her jewelry. I tried to recreate the period from uh, about the time that she lived here. But these are all from my personal collection and things that I borrowed. This was a powder box that our Lalique designed in the 20s. Now it was, you know, just so commercial. commercial yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, everything is original. No. Everything here is original, including the clothing is all original from the period. This way, in here, in here. It's the gentleman's dressing room, and what we try to do is have it have the feel of a man's area rather than overdoing it. It's very simple. All the clothing in the uh, room comes from McGinty's in Pasadena. Furniture was provided by a different eye in Pima and also on Holly Street in Pasadena. It was a great doing it. <laughs> I personally sandblasted the whole thing and took us three weeks to do it with a very fine sand. Of course, now it's ready for its uh,
What we're doing in the kitchen is we're exploring the wonders of Greystone's kitchen and this magnificent refrigerator. We have a representative of Bonnie Doom Vineyard and we're very, very happy to display our wines here today because we're very proud of them and we hope you'll get the opportunity to enjoy them. It's a breakfast loggia and you represent 1925 service behind you, Art Deco, and then you have two other breakfast tables set up in different ways. It's very French, um, you know, table settings. And this is our terrace retreat and we believe that every place should be a retreat. Every place with plants, when you go to sit down to eat, to be a retreat from the hustle bustle of the world. So we've created a very serene setting here. There are palms and everything flowing in the wind. And you don't even know where you are. And we can do this anywhere, any venue. It was simply beautiful. It really was. The rooms were done magnificently. Um, of course, you have like Neiman Marcus and all the fine shops on Beverly Hills. They did a wonderful job. And this historical society did a wonderful job. The presentation is really beautiful. Okay, this is the ladies' lounge. And this is the ladies' lounge attendant. And this is where the ladies came uh, during parties when they wanted to loosen their girdles or have a glass of water. <laughs> are from Jeff, an antique store on 459 South Cabrera. We have someone in residence who's working on his butterfly collection. Basically, his, his personality is very teenage point. We've got African porcupine quills, we've got fish, we've got horns, we've got lots of skeletons. We have a beluga whale skull and an alligator skull. It represents the gift, the, some of the heads of state gifts which were given to President and Mrs. Reagan during the administration. As you know, the administration did cover 1981 to 1989, so there are several lovely gifts in the collection. We have silvers and porcelains. Uh, we are represented by Japan, Germany, Sri Lanka, Jordan, um, Algeria, and France. 
and the flatware set, which is over in the corner here, was a gift from the president of Indonesia. We at Neiman Marcus are as committed to fashion for oneself as we are to fashion for the home. And being that we are a fashion store, we decided to design a room, the revival of Gothic, since the room is in the Gothic revival style. And we chose elements from this season's fashion trends that we, from Neiman Marcus when we were in Europe and in New York, that we picked up from the different runways as the current designers that are designing collections. From Versace and Valentino, Calvin Klein and Donna Karen, we saw the reoccurring theme of a lot of velvets. and also the wearing of crosses, and crosses became an important emblem on clothing and as an embellishment to clothing. And these clothes from Johnny Versace show very much that heavy, opulent feel of the kind of costuming that we saw in Dracula, the movie. So we took a lot of the elements from the collections and put them into paintings and into the table setting to create a very gothic on gothic sort of room, and that's what inspired the entire space. I'm tremendously impressed. I think they've done an absolutely fantastic job.